Today we're going to be talking about how to find the equation of a hyperbola given only its foci and its vertices. And in this particular problem, we've been told that this hyperbola has the vertices negative 3, negative 4, and negative 3, 6, and that it has the foci negative 3, negative 7, and negative 3, 9. So the first thing we need to notice right off the bat here is that the x-coordinates of the vertices and the foci are all the same. In all points, we have the x-coordinate negative 3. What that tells us essentially is that we have vertices and foci stacked on top of each other where the y-coordinate changes but the x-coordinate doesn't. So they're in this fashion right there. Automatically then we know, given the vertical orientation of these points, that they're connected to each other with a vertical line. We know that our major axis is a vertical line and therefore that also tells us that our hyperbola opens up and opens down like this. So we have a hyperbola opening up and down. We also know that the hyperbola is a shifted hyperbola as opposed to one that is centered about the origin. Because if it was centered about the origin, then all of our x values in these coordinate points would be zero and the y values would change because our major axis would have to run through the origin or be the line x equals zero, the y axis. But because they're all at negative three, we know that we have a shifted hyperbola that opens up and opens down. So with that in mind, it'll be really helpful for us to look at the chart that I have here on my website. We know our hyperbola opens up and down and it's shifted, which means that we're looking at the second row here in this table where we have the hyperbola shifted opening up and down. Therefore, we know that the equation of this hyperbola is going to be defined by this equation right here. Now we just need to figure out all of the values in this equation. We only have the vertices and the foci to work with, so let's go ahead and take a look at those two columns. First of all, we have vertices here at h, comma, k plus or minus a. Well, our vertices, our x-coordinate value is negative 3 both times, and in the vertex column here, we have that the x-coordinate is equal to h. So we know that in our case, h is equal to negative 3. Then we know that our y-coordinate is going to be defined by k plus a or k minus a. Well, a always has to be a positive value. So if a is a positive value, then we know that k plus a has to be greater than k minus a. So what that tells us is that k plus a has to be equal to 6 and that k minus a has to be equal to negative 4. So given that, we can solve these equations simultaneously to find k and a. So let's go ahead and add these two equations together. When we do, we'll see that we get 2k, the a's will cancel, and we'll get 6 plus a negative 4 gives us positive 2. Therefore, we see that k is equal to 1 when we divide both sides by 2. So we have h equals negative 3, we have k equals 1. We can plug k equals 1 back into one of these equations to find a. So if we plug it into k plus a equals 6, we get 1 plus a equals 6, or in other words, a equals 5. So that's really all we can get from vertices. Now let's take a look at foci. So if we look in the focus column here, we know that our foci are going to be at the coordinate points h comma k plus c and h comma k minus c. Since we have negative 3 for the x coordinate and the foci column shows h for the x coordinate here, that reaffirms our understanding from before that h is equal to negative 3, which we already got from the vertex coordinate points. But we can use this k plus or minus c to find c since we've already found k. So again, same thing here, c has to be positive, so we know that the y-coordinates of our foci are going to be at k plus c and k minus c. Since c is positive, we know that k plus c has to be greater than k minus c, so k plus c is going to be equal to 9, k minus c is going to be equal to negative 7, these two y-coordinate points here. Now we could solve this simultaneously and find a value for c, but we already know that k is equal to 1. 
So what these equations become here, if we plug in 1 for k, like this, we'll get for the top equation, c equals 8 when we subtract 1 from both sides, and for the bottom equation, negative c equals negative 8 or c equals 8. It's really great to be able to check it both ways because that means that we found a value for k that works for this equation as well. But either way, we've proven here that c is equal to 8. So now you can see here, if we look at our chart, we have a value for k, we know that k is equal to 1. We have a value for h, we know that h is equal to negative 3. We know that a is equal to 5, so that means a squared will be 25. So we have a value for a squared, we just need b squared. We haven't found b squared yet, but our chart tells us that we have an equation that relates b squared to a squared and c squared, and we have a and c, so we can use this equation to find b. So if we say that c squared is 64, because we take 8 squared, we get 64 equals a squared, which we know to be 25, plus b squared. So when we subtract 25 from both sides, we see that b squared is equal to 39. b, of course, would then be the square root of 39, but b squared is what we're really interested in here. So we have b squared equals 39, and we have this value. Now we have everything we need to go ahead and write the equation for the shifted hyperbola that opens up and down. So our equation notice is going to be y minus k. So we'll have y minus k, k is 1, so we'll have y minus 1 squared divided by a squared, which we know here is 25, so 25. Then according to our formula here for the equation, minus x minus h. So x minus a negative 3 will be x plus 3. We'll square that. And then divided by b squared, we know b squared is 39, so we have 39 here, and we set that equal to 1 according to the equation for the shifted hyperbola that opens up and down. And that's it. That's the equation of the hyperbola, and that's how we find it using only the vertices and the foci. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.